All right, guys, so today we're going to talk about um, resource management. This is PowerPoint 4. We skipped PowerPoint 3. We're going to do it tomorrow. Um, this is a dry one. I'm not going to lie to you. There's not going to be any giggles or fun parts to this, um, but we're going to kind of try to simplify it and get through it um, as painlessly as we can. So resources being managed. Resource management. Uh, efficient use of organizations resources is important. You don't want to waste stuff. You don't want to order too much stuff. You don't want to order too little stuff. Um, when we are talking about resources, we might mean money, financial resources, that's money, inventory, like how many band-aids you got, or human skills, meaning like your employees. <clears throat> um, financial records are important for this. So I don't know if y'all keep track of your money um, I highly suggest that you start using some sort of tracking method for your money. Um, I use Mint. Uh, it's a wonderful, wonderful thing that kind of just automatically tracks all the money that you spend and categorizes it and tells you where's your money going. Um, shocker, it's it's food. It's all going to food. Um, but hospitals have to do basically like the same thing. So they have to figure out how they're spending their money um, year to year, quarter to quarter, uh, not only like you know, where's it going, but um, also for how much they've been buying of things. So track not only like money spent, but like how many, you know, nurses did it take last year to run CMC Maine uh, so that they can um, keep track of all that type of stuff. So these are the four categories. And remember I told you this section, how they test a lot of times is they'll give you an example of something and say, which one is that? Is that this one, this one, this one? Um, I'm not really going to do that on the test, so we don't have to stress quite as much. I just want you to have a, a nice basic understanding of what all of these are. So managing agency finances, acquiring and distributing your resources, managing and maintaining the equipment that you have, and then staff development and staff productivity. So managing agency finances comes first. Um, whether that's that you are part of the purchasing process or you're auditing, um, your orders, your invoices, any discrepancies in, uh, when you're reviewing your finances. This is a big one. Evaluate cost of benefit that support best products. Remember me telling you about the cups. Cheaper isn't always better. Um, I, again, one time I remember I, I switched the vitamin C that I was buying because uh, I found a brand that was cheaper, but come to find out the cheaper brand was actually 500 milligrams instead of 1,000, so I had to take two of them. So it was not cheaper. It was a mistake on my part. Um, so kind of like that, that uh, benefit cost ratio. And try to identify opportunities for reduction. So this is reducing wasteful uses of resources. You know, do what do you do? You buy things in packs of six when you only need three and then you have to throw away the extra three because you maybe try to find things that are sold in packs of three that even if it costs a tiny bit more, you'll you'll actually end up spending less in the long run um, because you're not wasting the the extra three, whatever. Um, one of my favorite movies growing up was Father of the Bride. And I remember he was walking through the grocery store um, tearing out hot dog buns. Like he was like throwing away a hot dog bun and the cops were like, what are you doing? And he was like, they sell hot dogs in packs of 10, but they sell buns in packs of 12. I don't need 12 buns. I need 10. I'm removing the superfluous buns. So that was a, you know, minor mental breakdown on his part, but um, it, it was a, a valid point. Like, you know, I'm wasting two of these every time because I only have this many hot dog um wieners sausages i don't know what you call the meat part you know what i'm saying um so things like that okay so that was managing agency finances now you're going to go to acquiring which means to get and distributing which means to pass out your resources so when we're talking about this type of stuff i want you to think about little things that could actually be distributed like um you know gauze and alcohol swabs and gloves and gowns and masks and oh remember those those were a thing we used to have so this takes a lot of organization i know the lady that ordered our stuff at the cath lab 
was super type A and she really needed to be. Um, you have to go through all the catalogs, go through different vendors and their price lists. You have to keep an inventory. So you can't wait for someone to be like, hey, we have one set of gloves left before you go order more because then a lot of people die and <laughs> OSHA and JCO get real mad until your new gloves come in. So you have to keep track of how much you have so that you know when to reorder well ahead of time. Oh, I, all that kind of makes sense, I think. And then after you buy it, you got to go walk around and give it out. So usually you at least assist with um, sometimes on smaller units of the cath lab, the lady that bought was the one who pushed the little cart around and, and gave out everyone their, their resources. Um, so she was helping with distribution. So that all of this you buy and you distribute so that you can maintain adequate quantities of all your things. So, you know, your forceps or your big manometers. Um, this is a little thing that you uh, use to help put ET tubes in. This is what pulls the patient's tongue back out of the way so that they can put the little breathing tube down in a patient. And these are hospital towels. Just kidding. I'm pretty sure that's a maid. Anyways, so again, you buy and you distribute so that everyone has enough. Now we are moving on to manage and maintain equipment. So Equipment I want you to think of here as bigger stuff, right? So resources were like band-aids and gloves and stuff. Um, equipment, I want you to think of like x-ray machines, MRI machines. Um, so you have to have written instructions for how to um, operate them and then policies and procedures about them. A lot of times that's like how many times do they need to be checked in a, in a shift. It, this is the checking part. So you implement a preventative maintenance, preventative maintenance. So this is like when you have a car, you're not only supposed to take it in when it's making that weird noise that you can't figure out. You're supposed to take it in at like 50,000 miles and 100,000 miles or whatever to get everything kind of tuned up to prevent problems. So on all of our big equipment, we have to have preventative maintenance. Um, so in the hospital, actually, pretty, I'm pretty sure it's every medical facility, um, the AED and the uh, defibrillator, so the automatic one, but more importantly, the one that's not automatic, the one that like real medical professionals use and um, we decide when it shocks people instead of the machine deciding. We had to check that um, depending on the floor. It was either every 12 hours or every 24 hours. So once a shift, usually someone had to come in and go through the checking process because we needed to make sure that the defibrillator worked and that it still had all of its pads, um, the different sizes that the pads were in date that the battery wasn't low, all that type of stuff, because you really don't want a defibrillator saying low battery when someone codes and you need it. And you have to make sure that everyone's trained on it. So every time we got a new defibrillator from a new company, they would come in and tell us, hey, here's how you do this one. Plot twist, it was the exact same way. All right, so last one is staff development and then staff productivity. These kind of can be broken down into two different things. These, they don't go real well. I know they both deal with staff, but like they don't have a lot to do with each other. So first we're gonna talk about staff development. Staff development, think of that as like your continuing education, your CEUs. So you're gonna train people. You have to train them in all sorts of things, but definitely any new equipment you have to train them in. And some of this is on the, um, the employee. So like as a nurse, I know that I had to have, you know, 15 to 30 hours of CEUs every two years. And that was on me to get them. However, like I said, if the hospital started using a new whatever, a new x-ray machine or a new defibrillator, um, they had to train me on it. Uh, I remember I put computers here because I was actually working at CMC Maine when we switched from paper charting to computer, like to online charting. They sent every employee to like a week long class to get used to the computer system. And still the day that we went live, I was on night shift. I have never seen so many grown women crying in a hallway as watching those nurses try to computer chart with all the bugs and all the everything the, the first time that it tried to go live. It really like I have PTSD to that night every now and then. Um, but they had to do staff development. They had to train us on those uh, online computer charting systems uh, before we started. And they had people there for weeks trying to help all of us figure it out. Oh, God, I can't even. Let's move on. Um, oh, yeah. So CPR research counts um, in the hospital. CPR certification usually lasts two years. But in the hospital, we don't let it go that long. You have to get CPR uh, recertified every year. 
Um, if you're at the BLS, like the basic, just the one that everyone takes. Um, and then if you're at the advanced one, um, it's, a, it's a little bit different, but uh, all that type of stuff counts as staff development. All your classes count as staff development. Now, um, monitoring productivity. So staff productivity is like how productive are, are your staff? How many, well, let me just let you, okay. So labor distribution, meaning where am I gonna send my people? <clears throat> so if you're CMC, you have, you know, a thousand nurses. Well, how many of those need to be on the ortho floor versus how many need to be in the trauma ICU? A lot of that depends on how many patients you have and what the safe ratio is. So like if you're working on a normal floor, you might be able to have six or seven patients. Oh God, you shouldn't, but they do let you have six or seven patients versus if you work in an ICU, this, the staff ratio, the patient ratio is <clears throat> one nurse to a maximum of two patients. And sometimes they can only have one if it's a complicated enough patient. So how are you going to distribute your labor? And uh, so that's this. Um, you have to figure out what that safe ratio is. And sometimes it goes up and sometimes it goes down. So for instance, how many patients can a nurse aide take care of? In the hospital, on a normal floor, a nurse aide, a CNA, will have like 15 to 20 rooms that they're taking care of. Now, in a nursing home, sometimes it's way more than that because usually acuity of care, meaning like how sick they are, means you can take care of less of them. So obviously, they're in the hospital, they're sicker, so you can take care of less than if they're in the nursing home. Um, so that's productivity. How many people do I need if I have 50, you know, nursing home residents? How many nurses do I need to staff? How many uh, CNAs do I need to staff? And I believe, yep, that's it. That's it for today, guys. So I think your assignment's going to be basically uh, kind of like putting all this in your own words. So go ahead and get to it. I miss you. If you need me, I am here.